All right, with that public service announcement, I guess we can get started. Uh, excited to have both Garcia and, and Jeremy from, from the GitLab Manage team. Uh, so without further ado, uh, Garcia and, and Jeremy, I'll, I'll turn things over to you. So if you can introduce yourself and then uh, start with the talk, that will be great. Sure, sounds good. Uh, great, to, great to see everyone here. Excited to kick off the hackathon today. Uh, so I'm Jeremy Watson. I'm a product manager here at GitLab. I'm primarily responsible for the managed stage of the DevOps lifecycle, and uh, I'm excited to talk a little bit about manage as a stage, some of the categories we're involved in, and highlight how you can kind of find notable and interesting issues uh, that you can contribute to here at GitLab. Uh, that's a little bit about me. Uh, Goshi, over to you. Hi, my name is Gosek Shanak. I'm a backend engineer in a, a managed group, and I'm I'm at the GitLab to help Jeremy uh, put things uh, into life, and I'm here to help you uh, answer any question on engineering related question or just put things from my perspective. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, I'm super fortunate to be able to work with Gosia on a day to day basis. Uh, I am going to share my screen briefly. Um, so I guess the content for this conversation is really talking a little bit about manage as a stage and highlighting a couple of interesting issues and how you can find them to be able to keep, find really awesome ways to contribute to the GitLab application. So manage as a stage is divided into four groups that categorize our functionality into, into different areas and categories. So the first group that I'm going to talk a little bit about is the import group and the import group manages categories that are importers, templates, and internationalization. And whenever you're interested in like a particular category, the best way of kind of like looking at and trying to understand that is our categories page that you can see in our handbook here. So right now I'm looking at about.gitlab.com slash handbook slash product slash categories. And this is the best way for you to get a kind of an overview of kind of like how our functionality is kind of split between different stages. And this is really important because it helps you kind of understand the different areas of the product to contribute to and also who to ask for for help whenever you have a question on a particular issue. So look, scrolling down here, we have the manage stage and we're gonna start a little bit by talking about the import group. So here, whenever you're interested in a particular area, you can see that they're split into different categories, each with documentation links. And I think the import group, the category that's most, of most interest to, to folks is really around importers and being able to import and export information effectively in and out of the application. Um, you can generally find, like whenever you're curious about a particular uh, category, you can do a search under the GitLab project under a particular category name. So if you know, the category of, of importers and, exp and importers interests you, you can just search for category importers and then look for accepting merge requests and then be able to see a series of issues that are appropriate for you to contribute to. So importers, you can see that generally the themes around them are specific like uh, importers that help us get in information in and out of the project, out of the application. And I wanted to highlight like two inter really interesting issues. The first one of which is related to our importer functionality and adds a force option to allow import and export to work more effectively. One challenge for users that use project import and export is the fact that if we encounter an error, generally more often than not, the entire import job fails. Um, and one, one uh, great proposed addition is to add a force option to be able to ignore some of these errors, um, that to ignore some like certain errors that, and continue with the import uh, and allow like a partial import to actually succeed. Um, I think this is you know, a great, great suggestion. It's an area of the product that like the import team hasn't been able to effectively get to yet, but um, this is definitely alleviate like a lot of problems and a lot of challenges that some of our users face when dealing with our imported functionality. Um, the other, another category that I think is really interesting is templates. And in the, prod, in the application, we offer templates in a number of different forms. Um, project templates, we offer like a number of built-in options uh, for you to use when bootstrapping a project that, uh, that really help you kind of get started. And you can kind of see these generally in the, uh, in the template area here of the, when you are creating a new project. Um, I will let that spin for a minute. Uh, here we go. So we go over here to create from template and we see a number of built-in templates that, are, that, that get populated. And this is really helpful for instances and for users that are looking to create a project just you know, with a simple Rails template or a Spring template. But 
one ish, one really great imp improvement would be that when you create like a, one of these, a project from one of these templates, you actually see like the commit history from the GitLab team member that actually created the template in the first place. And a really nice improvement would be to just squash those templates, override the author, and then just have a very generic like first commit message so that, uh, that, so that we don't get confused when you're creating a project and you see uh, someone like ZJ in, in the commit history, uh, who's from the GitLab team and created one of the templates. So I think the import group is a really great way of finding a, like a, a wide variety of issues that are related to getting started in GitLab around importers, around templates, and also around internationalization. And again, you can find these issues generally by just searching for the category name that you're interested in, and then also doing accepting merge requests. Cool. I'm going to move on to the access group, uh, which deals with authentication groups and users. So jumping back to the categories page, you can see the access group is responsible for those categories. You can click here on the documentation. You can kind of see both our, you know, our, our documentation for that particular category product, as well as like the strategy of where GitLab is, develop, is uh, kind of allocating our development uh, attention to. But I think that there's a lot of really great and important issues that we just simply haven't been able to prioritize that the community is really excited about. Uh, I'll highlight two of them here, which one of which is just allowing you to star groups, which is a very simple kind of UX improvement. Right now, you can star projects, and it's a very easy and simple way for you to be able to find projects that you're interested in, either from, from like you've created or your organization has created, but you cannot do that with groups. And at the moment, finding groups can be a challenge. You, can, you have to bookmark them in your browser or scroll through a very long list of of groups under your groups and a really simple improvement would just be allowing the same pattern that we have for projects, allowing users to start groups and subgroups and introducing a new section here in the, in the dropdown to allow you to, to view them. This would be a really nice improvement. I've been excited about it. Uh, the community has been excited about it and we haven't been able to, to get to it up until now. Uh, the other issue I'll highlight is just simply being able to, to disable the explore and help URLs, uh, which are currently uh, available and accessible by non-authenticated users. When you spin up a GitLab instance um, and you disable and you and, uh, and, and most pages kind of require authentication. However, there are two URLs that we expose that don't require authentication and that's slash help and then slash explore. Um, some organizations obviously prefer to have everything related to GitLab be private and route everything to, uh, to the sign-in page and require authentication for everything. And this would be a really great setting for those uh, security minded instances uh, to keep them secure. So, uh, you know, I guess in closing, like the access group is really responsible for, you know, keeping instances uh, secure and maintaining uh, access to making sure the users can register and access the instance easily for a wide variety of identity providers. And uh, there's a lot of really exciting, interesting issues here if you're kind of interested in that kind of, that kind of thing. Uh, I think moving on from there, there's the compliance group, which is a new group that we've actually created to specialize in like instances that are compliance minded. And generally these, these uh, features and capabilities are generally directed at the enterprise. Um, I think the most uh, kind of uh, contribution friendly category is really around audit management, which deals with like the audit event system within the application and how we track and maintain control over an instance. Um, one like particular, uh, Set or issue that I'll highlight, which is in GitLab Starter, but we're always accepting contributions, is just adding more and more events to like our audit event system. So this, for instance, just adds like you know project repo setting changes to the audit events. That like, when like someone is changing the you know repository settings like around push rules, that we're actually tracking those changes and making sure that we have uh, we have a uh, an audit history for around those changes. So like I mentioned, this is an enterprise feature in GitLab Starter. There is an issue where we're considering moving some of this down into core, but uh, at the moment, uh, it, I think this is this is a great area of the product that's always welcoming contributions and and, uh, and and to help make the application better. And I think lastly, uh, analytics is a, is the final group that deals with kind of DevOps score, code analytics, and DSM. This this is you know creating insights into GitLab around how people are using the application, how you can find bottlenecks in your software development lifecycle and ship software faster. And we see this with uh, areas like the DevOps score category, uh, feature, which is currently called the Con Dev Index, which tells you kind of how the instance is utilizing GitLab at a high level compared to other instances. 
code analytics, which is a new area, and then value stream management, which is primarily around cycle analytics, contribution analytics, and a new analytics feature called productivity analytics that we just released a couple of releases ago. And I think there's a lot of, of, of great features here, especially if you're a front end developer. Like one feature that I'll highlight here is just around a lot of simple UX improvements around front end tidiness and under contribution analytics, where we have just some design and front end issues that, uh, that, that kind of require some consistency and improvement. Um, so I think that analytics, if that's an area that is, that is of interest to you, especially if you're a front end developer, definitely take a look at that category for uh, in these categories for, uh, for interesting issues there. So that's really managed. That's a kind of a highlight, uh, a high level of kind of what we do as a stage, the areas that we focus in. And really how you can contribute as a contributor is just by taking a look, understanding those categories a bit better, find interesting problems to solve by searching for accepting merge requests and by either the group or subject label, like I mentioned before. Uh, all you can do is, you know, you, you can either click on this link for an example, or when you're searching gitlab.org, search for the category that you're interested in, and then also make sure that you check accepting merge requests to find interesting, uh, interesting issues that are accepting contributions. And uh, also, I'll call out, please don't forget to check the group not own label for issues. Um, there's a label that we use for issues that don't really have a strong owner in terms of a stage or a group. And this is also a really great way of finding uh, issues that could use contributions simply because they're, uh, they're not being prioritized actively by the GitLab team. And you can kind of see a lot of interesting issues that are about 52 here around like retrieving uploaded files using an API, reflecting like your time zone throughout GitLab. All these are great improvements. And because of the fact that they've, uh, they have this label, they're not being actively prioritized. And we definitely welcome contributions there. And then lastly, if you have design or product questions, feel free to, to tag the PM for the relevant group in the, uh, in the issue. And you can generally find like the PM that's, that's, that's responsible for a particular area by again, visiting the categories page where I was, where I highlighted these categories before with the documentation and strategy links. And you can see up here that the first person in the, in the group is, is the product manager. So you can see that if you were working on like a issue that has access group, um, and you can find that generally by looking here on the right hand on the sidebar and noticing that there's a group access label that's applied to it. And most issues will have like a group label for you to kind of like look, look at when you're, uh, when you're trying to understand who to kind of contact with a particular issue. You simply go to the uh, categories page here, find the product manager that's responsible for it. When you click on that, their name, it'll take you to a page like this, and you'll be able to click on this icon here to to find their, their GitLab profile. And then you can see that uh, my, my handle here is at Jeremy. So you can, uh, you can go over there and at mention me in the issue and I'd be happy to jump in and uh, clarify whatever product or design questions you might have and get you unblocked. So that's all I've got, but uh, thanks a lot for contributing. I'm excited to kick off another hackathon and thank you so much. I appreciate it. Cool, thanks. And then I think Dennis just posted a question. Uh, I'm not sure if you, you probably didn't have a chance to look at it, Jeremy, but I think this also brings up sort of the, one of the points that you brought up. I mean, although like an issue might be labeled for a specific group or stages, uh, I mean, it's not surprising that, I mean, manage is very broad, right? I mean, the, there might be an element that's very relevant to manage anyway. So, I mean, don't, uh, I mean, my one feedback is don't get too encumbered by like a groups or, or, or like a DevOps stages. Like if uh, other team members need to get involved, I mean, we obviously will, but uh, Gosha or, or Jeremy, I don't know if you have anything else to add to that specific issue or others like it. But. What I can say from my perspective is just uh, please don't be afraid of the vast code base of GitLab because we've all been there. And yeah. It is a very big project, but uh, it is it's actually really easy to uh, to wrap your, your head uh, around it. And like, don't be afraid to contribute uh, because uh, even if you don't know the project that well, we we get your back because you will uh, you will have like our best people to review your changes and have a very nice discussion about uh, about uh, what's going on there and everyone is really willing to help. Yeah, great. Yeah. And then, I mean, the one thing I mentioned in probably every hackathon as well, it's completely fine to 
can't mention somebody on issues or 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 merge requests. I'm just because you're not part of GitLab doesn't mean that people aren't going to respond to them or pay attention. I think all of us have like a pretty strong open source background or 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 passion for it. So. Uh, like Gosha said, we we know where uh, how frustrating it could be when when there's a dead silence for a few days. So that's not a normal practice. People can be busy, but I mean, feel free to uh, at mention anybody uh, and then uh, to get our attention. Uh, I mean, one I guess uh, question for you, Gosha. I mean, this might be a little too broad or, or general, but. Uh, I mean, you've done a lot of reviews uh, for MRs from both community members and and and, team, and GitLab team members. I mean, what are some of the like a quick like one or two advice that you you want to provide uh, to community members as they think about contributing? But like, I think the community members have the same experience as any of us who just started with GitLab. So, uh, a bit of a fear of co contributing to this big big just start with the, i think the best thing is just to start with some small issue and just gradually uh, make your way um uh the the great thing about gitlab is that uh, and i say to i say it to everyone that uh if you look for something you will find it in the way in the place that you are expecting it to find it which is very very nice and it's not the, the it's not the rule in every project and that i think the the Test coverage is really, really good. So um, I'm not afraid to commit my changes because I know that if some, if my change uh, may may harm some other place, it will be probably caught by by uh, our great test coverage. So it's and it's very re very reassuring for a developer or a community contributor to know that uh, like the, the test coverage is so good. Cool. Thanks. And another question from Dennis. I mean, thanks for thanks for your questions. Uh, would it be appropriate for takeover and inactive uh, merge requests from a hackathon? I mean, in general, I would I would say yes. I mean, one of the things uh, I don't know if this would be doable in the two day period during the hackathon, but leading up to it, if there's an old MR that hasn't been uh, actively worked on for the past several months, I think. Uh, I'll be happy to do this on behalf of you, Dennis, or you can do this yourself. Just uh, just ping the the contributor, the original contributor, and if that person's not responsive within a week or so, I think it's completely appropriate. I, I don't uh, I don't see any reason why you can't do it. So, uh, I mean, you could, for example, do this like a week or two before the hackathon starts, and if that person's not, not responsive, just open a new MR. That's that's completely appropriate. I mean, sometimes it does happen when. Uh, two similar MRs come in uh, addressing the same issue, and then we'll figure out how to how to deal with that. I mean, like usually, if if they're like almost identical, it'd be uh, sort of first come first serve. But um, that is, if you find something that hasn't been worked on, feel free to point them out to me, and and then uh, happy happy to have you continue or complete the work. So. Thanks, yeah. I agree. And one thing I'll, I'll add into Gosha's comment was yeah. that. Um, you know, GitLab is super iterative, and you know, if you decide that a problem is interesting to you, but the, maybe the way the proposal is too large or too challenging, and if there's a small a, a thing that you can ship that's smaller or that just moves us in the right direction, even if it's just like a copy change, like we would definitely welcome that contribution. Like, you, if you see an issue and either the you know it's, you feel like it's too large or it's going to take too long, but there's something else that we can do that's like solves a part of the problem. Like GitLab is great about getting smaller changes merged in. Like no one is going to reject the change because it isn't large enough. On the contrary, like we welcome like really small changes. Um, so please keep that in mind and don't like just, you know, take the, take the issue as like the, uh, the only way of solving a problem. Like I would read the, the, the problem statement, think about like, oh, how, how can we solve this in like a, the smallest way possible? And then if you can break it down even further, like please do. Cool. All right. Any other questions or parting thoughts? Uh, 
Kosha, Jeremy, thanks for thanks for joining. I mean, Jeremy, it was great to get a. I think you gave us an overview of managed stage about a year ago, but this <laughs> we've gone through so many changes over the past four quarters. So the refresher was definitely great. And Kosha, uh, get a uh, engineering perspective, and your participation was much appreciated. Uh, and thanks for others who who joined in. And I'll get this posted shortly on the hackathon page. And yeah, Jeremy, if you can get me a link to your slides as well, uh, that'll be that'll be awesome. So people can uh, view it uh, if, for those who weren't able to join. Right. Sounds good. Right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Thanks a lot. See ya.